Welcome, thanks for joining us. I'm Christina Whitney, and with me we've got Kelly Ashton, and we are studio educators and manager for the Handy Quilter Studio. Today, let's first of all look at this quilt behind us on the wall. This is a beautiful quilt that Kelly made, and do you want to talk to us about it for a second? Well, it just has um, a lot of improvisational quilting, so it was just a quilt that gave me an opportunity to try a lot of different techniques. So, and today I, I want to show you some fun designs that that I quilted on here. So we're going to kind of focus on these circular designs at the top. So, okay, that's a beautiful quilt. So today we're going to talk about some ruler sets. Yes. We have the HQ ring templates in two different sizes. We've right. got the silver set and the gold set. Kelly, tell us about these. Okay, so the reason we have a gold and a silver set is because the silver set comes in half inch sizes. So that means you get a, a circle from one and a half inches all the way up to 10 and a half inches. And because they're nested, you have actually, like on this one, you have a a two and a half on the center, the small one. Let me show you right here. Okay, so the center has a two and a half inch circle. If I go around that, this this template itself is two inches round. Okay. But because our hopping foot is a half inch, that moves our stitch a fourth of an inch away from the edge of this circle all the way around. So it's going to stitch actually two and a half inch circle. That is good to know because right. I know some rulers, they'll say two and a half inches and that's the actual size of the ruler, but this is two and a half inches is the stitch length right. or the stitch size. And the next one okay. does one and a half on the inside and four and a half on the outside. So then we go all the way up to 11 and a half. So that's our silver set. The gold set has even numbers from two inch all the way up to 11 inch. So that's why we have two different sets is because you can have both sizes if you need them, but I'm going to show you another trick. Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah. So Christine and I both really love stitching <laughs> yeah. with rulers, so we're excited to be showing you the rulers today. So there's some tools that you need before you use rulers, and the number one is safety. So we have to be safe when we're using rulers. The so ruler this base. is our ruler base, and that what this does is it extends the throat of the machine so that we can okay. safely lay a ruler or a template across it and not have, so if I were laying it across the throat of the machine, I can't lay it flat. It's just going to mm -hmm. bobble on that arm. Yep. So if we put the ruler base on, our machine has notches on the side right here. And whoops, my thread's connected. So if I just slide this over the first notch and set it down, it just easily slides right into place. That's, Excellent. That's all it takes for the ruler base, is to just easily slide that in. But so anytime you're going to use rulers, yeah, right? It's like a table extension. Yeah. Yeah. Someone asked me once why it wasn't longer, but it doesn't need to be longer because it just moves with the machine. Mm -hmm. Everywhere I move the machine, it's yep. it's moving with it. Okay. And then um, I know we've talked about this before, but this is our sure foot. And anytime I use rulers, I like to use the sure foot because it has a higher profile. So it makes it so that you can't put the ruler on top of the foot and get it, the needle hit by the needle. Yeah, because we don't want that. If you're super <laughs> talented, you can do it, but it's not something you want to achieve to accomplish, really. No, it's so, not worth it. No, so this is like our insurance policy, right? Mm -hmm. This ensures that you're not gonna hit the ruler with the needle, okay? So those are uh, a couple of things that you just really need to add to your to your machine quilting if you're going to use rulers okay definitely so have you used the circle templates before the circle rulers a little bit they're kind of called they're called the ring set is actually what they're yes. called but yep. um i wanted to show some designs that i really like to stitch with the rulers because sometimes you just need to be able to see the thread path to understand how to make it work excellent okay, okay let's and see what you've got one of the one of the first things I want to recommend when you're using circular rulers is to add handy grip because it's really hard to hold all the way around. Have you done that before? Is that why you're snickering? Uh, y yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you really want to be able to hold that ruler in place. Obviously, I did it too right here, okay? But see, you were smart though. You stopped and put handy grip on. I just keep going. <laughs> <laughs> I did too, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
We do what we say, not what we do, right? All my all my rulers at home have a handy grip on. Yes. Okay. Um, so, the Baptist fan. Have you ever stitched out a Baptist fan? Using Pro Stitcher. Does that count? That's really an easy way to do it, isn't it? But it you is. can easily do it with a set of rulers. Ooh, okay? Show us how. So we're going to take this set. I wanted the even circled ones. Okay. So I'm going to take the even circle ones. And what so I need to do is add a straight line. Here's my ruler. So I already stitched it out. But what I need to I need to have, and when I stitch the Baptist fan, normally when I'm free motion quilting, I start in the upper left hand corner and then I stitch across to the right mm -hmm. and I work my way down. Yeah, same way that you would read. Right. Okay. But if you were going to choose to stitch a Baptist fan, it's really a lot easier to start from the bottom and go up. So if you're going to fill a space with a Baptist fan, we're going to start at the bottom. That's trick number one. Okay. That is a good tip. Yeah. And then we're going to draw a line across the left of my first row. I just need, this is, pretend like this is the corner of my quilt. I'm going to have a line across the left, right, like this. Okay. And then I'm going to have a line across the bottom. So your vertical and your horizontal. Yes. At the bottom left. The bottom left. Okay. okay. So then I'm going to take, because these rulers are marked so well, they have lines across vertically and horizontally. So my very bottom one, I'm just going to line it up with the line across the bottom and the line, the center line across the bottom and the center line. So I'm only having a fourth, I'm only stitching around a fourth okay. of this circle. Okay, that makes Did sense. Did I say that right? Yeah. Okay, now the other thing is, um, I just forgot where I was going with that, so I'll tell you in a second. So I'm just going to stitch it right here. And Baptist fans can be four repeats, five repeats, I suppose however many you want. Sure. I just chose to do four right here. Someone may be cussing me because maybe it's really supposed to be five every time. I always say there's no rules. We're, do yeah, what works for we're you. We're going to go with that. <laughs> okay. And I'm, I want to end up back down at the bottom so that I can move across the bottom. That's my goal is I'm moving across okay. the bottom. So, so if because I chose four, you're going to have to count out how many you're doing. Okay. But because I chose four, I'm going to start on the bottom. Okay. And I'm going to stitch around this up. I can move the machine and then I'm going to stitch straight up and instead of the three inch circle now I'm going to take the five inch and what am I lining up? I'm lining up the center line going vertically and the center line going horizontally on the two lines, my corner. Uh -huh. the, the line that you drew. Right. Excellent. Okay. okay. So then I'm going to stitch around that down to the bottom line. And if you'll notice we have this machine set up in clear view mode. Yeah. Would you want to tell them what clear view is? So, usually in standard view, your top is loaded from the front, or s the one closest to the machine, yeah. and then your next one that's closest to your body is your backing. In s clear view, though, it's backwards. So, so the top normally would come up from this bottom all the way over. Right. So this, if I'm set up in yeah. standard view, I have a bar across right here. Mm -hmm. I have a bar all the way across there. So it's really hard for me to hold these circular rulers because they hit the bar. Yep. So because I've set it up in clear view, we can use these bigger templates and not bump into that bar. It's wonderful. Yeah, clear view is really nice when you're using templates, okay? So I'm, I'm gonna mention something real quick because I know somebody might get concerned about this. Um, you have your top and your backing already loaded together on this bar. We don't have anything on the bottom bar. So just clarifying for people out there that it was already stitched together um, previously, yeah. so yeah. it's all loaded on one. Yeah, I stitched on it yesterday, and um, we're going to show you <laughs> something really fun. When I stitched it out, we're going to show you really fast speed, how fast of a quilter I am. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Just kidding, I'm not really that fast, <laughs> but we're going to play it really fast. So then I'm going to stitch it up here. Let's see, i got to go the right direction. I'm going down, and then I'm going over. Okay, so you're just traveling on that yeah. line. You're not breaking I'm traveling thread. on the line. And anytime you're using the markings on the ruler, make sure that the etched lines are down towards the fabric yes. or they're distorted. They're not really good measurements. And how so, do you know that the etched lines are down? Well, it's easy because then I can read the numbers. If they're upside down, mm -hmm. they're inverted and I can't read them. Okay, so then I'm stitching up like this. I'm going to stitch up. I'm going to take the next one, line it up vertically, line it up horizontally. 
and then I'm going to stitch down. And because I counted ahead of time, now I'm ready to just move over to the right and start over with my next one. So can you see what I'm saying? Yes. If I had done five, I would have needed to start to the left and come to the right so that it worked out equally. So you may have to kind of add how many echoes you're going to do okay. and decide whether you need to start on the right or the left so that you end up back on the right. So looking at this, just the way my brain thinks, I'm thinking, okay, we've got to do one, two, three, four, and you're back down. So uh -huh. thinking about this, you'd have to do even number of fans to make it so that you end up back down again. If I did a fifth one, I'd end up up here and I couldn't do my next one over it's, here. It's okay. If I start here on okay. the left, I could go one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now I need to go up the arc. Okay. So that I can come one, two, three, four, okay. five. So you would just start up on the arc rather than yeah. down on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. So that makes sense. It, it's simple. The Baptist fan is such a great traditional design. It is. And there's it really looks so great when it's quilted on a whole quilt. Mm -hmm. So it's it's just nice to kind of be able to see how that was done. Okay, so if I had my whole quilt loaded and I wanted it wasn't directional, it didn't matter, I could actually start upside down over there and do it this way okay. because some people are saying how can you start at the bottom and move up but yeah I could start over there and come over and back that way so another thing you could do it would be to base the entire quilt together going all the sure. way down and then start at the bottom and work your way up through Perfect. the whole quilt yeah that's the okay. way I'd prefer to do it so okay hey what else do you have all right so the ring templates so one so. of my favorite things to quilt is this design right here okay and just for fun we're going to so show you in like accelerated speed how to quilt this out. I'm going to show you how to, to do it on a drawing board so that you can really see in real time how to stitch it out. Okay. okay. Which set are you going to use for this one? So I'm just going to actually use one ruler okay. and I want to use, let's, let's use this one. Okay. Okay. I'm going to set these aside. Okay. So the first thing I've done is I've taken an eight point stencil and this eight point stencil, it's, it's just got the plus sign, it's got the X. Right? Okay. So. so I drew it on here one time and I actually wanted 16 lines so I rotated it and okay. I did it again. So okay. I actually instead of 8 points I have 16 points. Excellent. Okay and then I'm going to take this circle and I'm going to line up my vertical lines and I'm going to line up my horizontal lines on those, those, cro those direct lines. Okay. okay. So now if I take my regular shore foot and I stitch around this and by the way if you want to stitch around it without really moving your hand put your hand like this with your needle here and you can stitch around it without really having to adjust your hand it's like it's tricky right okay <laughs> so one ruler I've stitched around it one time okay okay now I'm going to put my ruler in the middle and you know how to do that why don't you show us? Okay. When you have a nested ruler, to be able to get it in the center, we just have to lift up this hopping foot. We're just going to lift that right there and slide that underneath it. Okay. The, the thing is I have to break my thread to get it into the center yep. like that and then break it before I bring it out. Okay. okay? So, so now I'm going to put my foot into the middle of this circle and I'm going to stitch around the circle like that. And again, handy grip would be very nice to have on there handy to hold grip's it in place. Handy grip really <laughs> nice. Yeah. Okay. Now, we haven't talked this about this yet. These are the echo feet. If I own the echo feet and I own one circle ruler, mm -hmm. I actually have one, two, one. 
two, three, four. I actually have eight different size circles. Yep. I'm really good at math these days, right? <laughs> so, so show us how we have eight different yeah. circles. The echo feet come. Um, let's see. Read those. I can't read those. Okay, we got glasses. eight. You know what? I'm going to take this fancy plastic off so we can see a little bit better. I, I just have misplaced one of these. So. We have three eighths inch, one half inch, and three quarter inch. Okay, so if I want an echo, so because right now my stitch was already a fourth of an inch away from there. If I wanted an echo that was a fourth of an inch away from that line, I could choose the, this one. Okay. But because I want an echo a little bit bigger, I'm going to choose the three eighths. Is this the? This is the half. Yep, that's our half. Okay. So that's going to put it half an inch away from my last line. From your so, last line or from your ruler? From my last stitching, okay? From my last stitching. So um, so that's a fourth. Yeah, it's a half an inch away. From, oh, it's half an inch away from the ruler. So that's only going to give me a fourth inch. I want a little bigger one. Okay, so let's go with the three quarter inch one. And I guess I don't. I don't know where I put that one. <laughs> It is over to your left. All right, that's okay. This one, I, this will show the same. I'm still going to put, if I, this is a little tricky because it doesn't really, I'm just going to draw it around here. If I draw, I'm still using one ruler, right? I haven't changed my ruler. I've just changed my feet. Oh, see, there's such a good reason to use a ruler because it makes a nice circle. <laughs> when you quilt without it. You can't free motion like that. Oh man, there, there's one thing that's really hard to quilt. It's a circle. Okay, use your imagination. It's your best imagination. <laughs> We're good at that. And it's a really nice circle, okay? It looks beautiful to me. Thanks, thanks Christina. <laughs> we gotta have some moral support here. All right, so with one ruler and two different feet, my sure foot, and one echo foot, I got four different circles. That is so cool. Right. It is so cool. And you didn't even have to move the ruler. You didn't have no, to do any more marking. I had marking. to keep it in the right place. That's all I had to do. I love it. Okay. So I showed you my favorite design and it has the rest of it. I'm just going to use a straight ruler. But, um, and you saw it stitched out really fast, right? So all I have to do is make a straight line on one of these 16 lines. Okay. And I actually could also if I had a circle stencil, I could actually make a circle in the middle here with chalk or some sort of marking tool. Right. If I wanted to pre be precise, right? Obviously I didn't because I just, <laughs> but I'm going to stitch a straight line and then I'm going to turn, where did my straight ruler go? Let um, me grab that for you. Um, that's why we do it this way so that you can see all of our mistakes. <laughs> Thanks, Christina. It's called teamwork. We work together. Yeah. So I would line this up so that my ruler is, or my needle is going to hit right there at the center, right? So it's got to be a fourth of an inch away. And I'm going to go straight. And then I'm going to go back to this point right here. And now I'm just going to draw, I'm going to fill in this left side with just little straight lines. And then I'm going to go straight, diagonal, diagonal. And I'm going to fill in this section right here. Straight. Diagonal. Sometimes you have to say those kinds of things to yourself, and you're so tired of hearing your own voice, but it helps you it does. to um, keep the same motion or the same pathway going. So straight, I like to count. Angle, angle. So when I quilted this on this quilt right here, I didn't know that trick. I didn't, this quilt right here, I did not know an easy way to do that. So I had to just kind of I guess geography came into play and I figured it out, but had I known and had I had the correct tools, I could easily stitch a design out like that. Yeah. So. So I want you to explain while we've got this drawing going, why you're only doing the fill on this one side. Well, because I've got to get all the way around. And if you watch that really fast video, you're going to see that when I got to the end, Pretend like that's the end. I'm going to come back here and then I'm going to fill in this side. Wow, that's some really nice stitching. So the point of this is to not have to break your threads. Right. It's so, all continuous line except yeah. for my circles that I had to break. 
I had to break to leave yeah. that echo. Yeah. And I really, really like to have an echo with my circles because it really makes a, an impact on the circle. When you yeah. leave a gap, a place that's not stitched, it really leaves some fun. It draws the eye. Yeah, that's, yeah. there you go, that's yeah. what it does. So, and without having the echo feet, you really need a lot of different sizes of circles to be able to echo them well. Mm -hmm. So by combining the echo feet and the circle templates, one circle template set and the, the echo feet gives you four times as many rulers. Yeah, how many rulers come in each one of the sets? Uh, let me show We've you. got them over there. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, and so that five would circles be? circles in each one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You get eight different circle sizes. So then if you add three feet, why do we there's do this too much to math. <laughs> you get 24 circles. Now there's more than that. You get, if you get four circles with one ruler. But some of them might be the same size. Yeah. We're not going to do the math. We know our limits. We're quilters. We'll quilt it. <laughs> Did you know that our machine has a handy dandy calculator on it? If we turned that no. on, we could figure it out for you. <laughs> All right? I'd have to draw it out on graph paper. Okay. That's how my brain works. Well, what you need to know is that Christina and I both love rulers and we just like to share with you ways to use them so that you can find out how you can use them in your studio as well. Yes. Right? Is there something about circles that you love that you like to do with? I love the fact that you can use these echo feet because when I first started quilting with rulers, I didn't have this whole set. Yeah. And I only had like one or two and it never fit what I needed it to fit right. in. And so using these echo feet with it really helped to be able to make it manageable for me. So I, I really enjoy using the echo feet with my circular rulers. Awesome, awesome. So, so I'm still gonna say that I think you get 32 circles with the echo feet and some, somebody's gonna correct my math. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll, we'll go back and play with that one. Yeah, so. okay. So thank you for joining us. Make sure that you like and um, subscribe to our YouTube channel and we hope you come back and watch again next week. We look forward to seeing you and have fun quilting this week.